Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video we're going to react to the 10 biggest YouTubers who are permanently banned and why. Ah oh man, I just, it, it must be the worst feeling ever, or I mean one of them, to build up your channel over years. You know, you build up a fan base um and you know youtube drops the hammer on you and there's no way back like i just what must you have done you must have said something absolutely insane like really bad like undeniably bad or did something on camera absolutely crazy bad like illegal probably like youtube doesn't ban accounts outright like for no reason like it's usually you've done something really really bad or you've just you've basically crossed the line so yeah i'm sure we're gonna we're gonna hear some crazy stories here we're gonna list these 10 permanently banned channels from smallest to largest explaining what they did beginning with the most unlikable channel in youtube history called it's owen you might recognize the channel from his Never notoriously terrible intros like this video and subscribe right now or this spider will put on your ear whilst you're asleep tonight always placed after shameless clickbait like charlie d'amelio is dying today on top of this owen relentlessly clickbaited fake mr beast scenarios however after tech Technoblade's passing on the 30th of June 2022, it's Owen took his scumbaggery to a point of no return. He'd upload a video titled Mr. Beast Final Goodbye to Technoblade, with the introduction stating this. This is Mr. Beast's final goodbye to Technoblade and their last time playing Minecraft together. Although the video showed nothing more than Technoblade playing Minecraft and a completely fabricated Mr. Beast tweet. The video received over 800,000 views in under 24 hours, yet with a top comment reading, Reading, the amount of disrespect this guy has is unlike anything I've ever seen Jeez. before. Complete and utter shame. He was about to face some serious backlash. Just awful garbage. I have more- Pure clickbait. Oh my god, that's sickening. That Owen guy, he needs to go see a psychiatrist immediately. More respect for shit stains in a gas station urinal than I do for Owen. YouTubers clickbaiting Technoblade's death for views has made me lose all faith in humanity. It's just so messed wow. up, which is followed by another tweet from Owen himself. At Team YouTube, my YouTube channel with 3.5 million subs just got terminated. Please help me get it back. I'm so depressed right now, I don't know what to do. After YouTube then responded, Owen doubled down by stating, I never received any community community guideline strikes, so I didn't know what I was doing was violating the guidelines. If I received just one strike, that would have been enough for me to realize what I did was wrong. Please give me another chance, I'm so depressed right now, it's my only income. Owen then made another two tweets displaying how desperately he wanted his account back, although Team YouTube concluded their thread by stating, Update, we've reviewed your account and confirmed that your channel was correctly suspended due to explicit content. Note that you will not be able to access or create any other YouTube accounts, although while everybody was happy to witness Owen's ban, Steve will do its termination was- Jeez, like what kind of kid, like, I'm trying to think of what kind of person, you know, would like, can, can do stuff like that without feeling super guilty. Like, you know, making just content about people's deaths and stuff like that, you know, just sick sick. A bit more controversial. Steve had always been on YouTube's radar for his unconventional style of content. Eating challenges, prank videos, and beginning in 2021 sponsored gambling uploads for which he was being paid more than a million dollars a month. It's therefore no surprise that Steve lent into this type of content, even picking up a sponsorship from Steak, until he made one simple error undoing everything that he'd worked for. YouTube has an extremely strange rule where you're allowed to say the name of any gambling website but you can't show the URL of the website with the .com included. Well, in June 2022, Steve uploaded a gambling video like any other, although the URL had been left in as his editor forgot to blur it. Despite Steve having no strikes on any of his channels, YouTube made the choice to permanently delete all of them. I'm allowed to say I'm playing the website, but they would go to deleting my entire main channel because on my second channel, it wasn't fully blurred. After which Steve said this. They called me the day of deletion and it was a girl she seemed pretty stoked i was getting deleted and huh. i was like yeah, she seemed happy and i was like i was with me and my editor and we're like we're like bro like she's happy as a result the nelk boys were warned about filming with him they basically said like your channel's going to be deleted if steve's in your videos which might be harsher treatment than that given to leafy <sighs> i mean it's somewhat harsh i guess to ban him outright for that one thing like they could have warned him 
But at the same time, gambling, you know, per, I personally think gambling is one of the worst inflictions on humanity. I know that, you know, a lot of people get like gamble recreationally and they can keep it under control, but a lot more people cannot and it ruins their lives. I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen. So I don't know. Ugh, tough one. Between 2013 and 2016, Leafy built a reputation for uploading edgy content, which flowed well with YouTube zeitgeist at the time. However, between 2017 and 2020, Leafy went on hiatus before returning with a pretty controversial approach. He'd upload a video titled Content Nuke Pokimane, in which he'd offer pretty reasonable criticism. 80% of Pokimane's streams is just her watching videos, adding actually nothing to what she's watching whatsoever. However, he'd then go on to upload 12 different videos clickbaiting Pokimane in the title and thumbnail while talking about unrelated topics in the video itself such as finance and investing. Of his last wow. 15 videos. So he's just using her face. Wow. <laughs> 12 of them were on Pokimane, having 12 videos all insulting Pokimane in the title and thumbnail, that's viewed as harassment by YouTube. Despite having no prior strikes on his channel, Leafy woke up to a permanent ban for creating content designed to harass, bully, or threaten. He take to Twitter stating, morning at Team YouTube, my channel was suspended yesterday. Curious if there's anything I could do to get it reinstated, or if there's any statement on this you could give on this. However, despite his tweet, Leafy seemed pretty unconcerned about having his channel deleted. If I am gonna be banned, like, like, so be it. The website is shit. What else is there need? Like, there's nothing else needed to be said. Pokimane took to Twitter wow. stating, I know I'm gonna get asked this, so I'd like to clarify I had nothing to do with Leafy's ban, before adding, don't want my silence to leave room for assumptions. Leafy's ban was bound to happen eventually. However, someone whose termination was a What? Is this the cabbie dude? The guy who does the, the funny videos? But yeah, I mean, that guy, come on. Like, yeah, that Leafy guy. You must have seen it coming. Like, you thought you could just do that? Like, and just, and li come on, <laughs> like. A little more surprising was that of Kabi Lami. He gained 100 million TikTok followers in less than five months, and with YouTube yeah, launching their own shorts oh. program, Kabi started posting across the two platforms. Oh, His notoriously funny skits exploded on YouTube as they had on TikTok, giving him over 800 million views and 2 million subscribers during his very first month on the platform. This was them. That is insane followed by another 800 million views in the next month. And after only four months of uploading to YouTube, Kabi Lami had racked up 2.4 billion views and 5.2 million subscribers. He was then banned permanently. Why? Well, you see, this wasn't actually Kabi Lami. It was an impersonator who was simply reposting his content to YouTube. He'd gained 2.4 billion views before YouTube ever realized, and this wasn't the only account doing it. Only wow. five days beforehand, YouTube had banned another Kabi Lami impersonator with 4.84 million subscribers, after which YouTube found a third impersonator who'd gained over 100 million views in a matter of days before they were also banned. As a result, wow. Kabi began uploading content to his own official channel, which remains very much active, unlike... That channel that racked up 2.5 billion views, if he was able, or she, to get monetized, they made millions off of that. I doubt it, though, because typically... Oh, he might have, you know... Because, you know, it takes a thousand subscribers and 4,000 watch hours to get monetized. And then YouTube has to approve the monetization. That takes about two, three days. After that, they then send you a pin for you to create an AdSense. That takes about a month. So even if he got a month of uh, 800 million, he's made millions off that, potentially. Wow. J Station. His termination began with a video titled My Girlfriend Alexia Died Rest in Paradise, in which he'd state the following. Last night, we lost Alexia to a drunk driver, guys. She was on the way to pick up something for our video we were making on our second channel. Doesn't this, I don't know, this feels like it's fake. Team team, can't hear guys. As mentioned, J Station's girlfriend had apparently died in a car crash, prompting him to upload another video visiting the spot where it supposedly happened. <laughs> Okay, man. However, this only three fine. days later, JayStation began using his girlfriend's death to gain extra engagement. As you guys know, my girlfriend Alexia just passed away in a tragic accident, guys. We're doing the Ouija board challenge on my dead girlfriend. Let's smash the like button right now, guys. One like equals one prayer for Alexia, guys. Wow. Rest in peace. Prompting some ordinary gamers to investigate if she'd even died at all. Man. 
man, some people really are just in the head sick. Like, I can't believe things will people will do to make, you know, money on YouTube. It's insane. No, I don't have anything by that name on the system. Nobody by that name specifically has suffered any form of death, right? No. As a result of the video, Alexia came forward confirming that she hadn't actually died. Jay faked my death. I felt sick to my stomach from the minute that he posted it. Before going on to add that the couple had since broken up. Like the times that he was mean to me, it's just like he was so mean and I just don't know why. Despite having posted years worth of unsavory content, it's it seemed faking his girlfriend's death was a step too far, as YouTube would permanently delete JayStation's channel on the 12th of March 2021. JayStation responded by stating, I didn't even do anything wrong, and I made videos all year getting no controversy. However, when these delusions failed to bring back his channel, he concluded, I'm going to sue them. Crazy. Anyways, I'm done. Nothing I can do now. Which is the same conclusion drawn by seven supergirls. The channel began in 2008 and featured seven girls for the seven days of the week that upload everything from skits to day in the lives, amassing over 5.6 billion views by 2018 when the channel took a pretty dark turn. The channel was owned by a 55 year old named Ian Rylett, who on the 17th of August 2018 was accused of acting inappropriately with one of the seven supergirls. Roughly seven months later, Ian pleaded guilty to the incident and wasn't only sentenced to three months in prison, but was also legally banned from working on YouTube. As a result, seven supergirls was terminated on the 12th of March 2019, at the time being the most subscribed channel ever to receive a permanent ban. That would be until nine months later, when YouTube's scummiest copycat was banned for stealing content. The Indonesian channel named Kalon Sajana had gained over 13 million subscribers by employing a highly unethical strategy that essentially find already successful videos spoken in English before copying the thumbnail in its entirety, adding their own watermark, and uploading it to Indonesian YouTube where the original creator had no way of finding it. Wow. Wow. <laughs> God. Do you know what? I'm like, some of the things people are doing, like, how are they thinking of this? It's just crazy. However, all of this changed in November 2019 when British YouTuber JT posted his own upload titled YouTuber with 12 million subs steals my video. This channel had the audacity to steal my thumbnail, put an emoji on it, and then put their watermark on it. They put their watermark on my thumbnail and claimed it as theirs. This YouTuber has stolen my thumbnail, stolen all the information from my video. They literally watched my video and took everything. They took the screenshots, they gave me no credit for my own DMs. This guy has literally just ripped me off completely, okay? JT then highlighted another crazy fact. This guy is the biggest YouTuber in Indonesia and he's stealing my stuff. He steals from people so much, okay, that he's got in his description, for copyright matters, please contact us at this email. He did this because he knows he's stealing content. Leading the Indonesian media to talk about Callan's unethical practices. A YouTube account from an Indonesian with more than 12 million subscribers has been accused of stealing other people's content, with the article attaching a side-by-side -side comparison comparison of some of the videos that stole it. So is he literally just uploading the same video but translated into Indonesian? Like if that's what he's doing, then that's just insane. Like not even like any attempt to add any additional content or value or information or opinion to it. <laughs> just just copy and paste. Having been exposed by his own country, Callan wrote an apology on Twitter translating to We from the entire extended family of Callan Sarjana apologize to the YouTube channel JT for using ideas, thumbnails, and video prototyping without permission before posting a second tweet reading Thank you for all your corrections. Hopefully the things that have happened will truly become a lesson for us to not make blah, any mistake blah, in the future. Blah. Are you going to give them any of the revenue? Huh? Are you going to give them any of the ad revenue? Probably not. Probably not. However, it was already too late. JT and two other YouTubers who had their videos stolen chose to simultaneously copyright strike Kalan Sarjana, terminating the channel on the grounds of multiple third-party claims of copyright infringement regarding material the user posted. He was a fraud. He deserved it. You steal content, you pay the price. That's just how it is. Although Indonesia wasn't the only country to lose their most subscribed channel, as Turkey's biggest was also banned at around the same time. 
The channel began with two kids and their father Muhammad focusing on children's content before they'd find themselves involved in Elsagate. Elsagate was the nickname for a 2016 genre of content where YouTubers took kid-friendly characters like Spider-Man and Elsa and mixed them with very unsavory themes. Inappropriate oh. videos have infiltrated YouTube kids, often showing popular children's characters in violent and even sexual scenarios. Oh, the motive behind the videos sake. was pretty damn obvious. Here's one from one month ago. 117 million views. Although with so many people watching, parents began to talk about it. There is a terrifying new trend in middle schoolers that I need to tell you about. Prompting advertisers to pull their ads from the site. We are shocked and appalled to see that our adverts have appeared alongside such exploitative and inappropriate content, said a Mars spokesperson in a statement. We've taken the decision to immediately suspend all our online advertising on YouTube and Google globally, therefore forcing YouTube to take a stance against these sketchy videos. Only four days after Mars and Adidas pulled their ads, YouTube removed over 150,000 Elsagate videos, turned off comments if there's one thing that's going to get YouTubers' attention, it's the advertisers, because that's what pays for YouTube, really. So, yeah, as soon as they got involved, like, look, look at this, 150,000 videos removed. Whew. Ooh, scorched earth. For more than 625,000 videos and terminated more than 270 accounts, one of which being Turkey's <laughs> biggest channel with over 15 million subs. Although no termination is stranger than that of Manoj Parahar. The channel was included amongst hundreds of banned multi-million subscriber Indian shorts channels who all employed the exact same strategy. They'd find Western videos that had been successful in English, cut them down into shorts and provide a Hindi voiceover, essentially re-uploading other people's content, with their language being the only difference. In an article discussing these channels, one owner stated, I would pick any video and do a voiceover. I realized that if we do voiceovers in a short story, then we're bound to get views, so I just stuck to that. Although this wasn't the end of the article. Over the past few months, he claims eight such fact channels have been banned. The rate at which YouTube grew their channels, it's also taking them away at the same rate. Many of these fact channels add voiceovers to content belonging to other creators, and that it's important for creators is to only upload videos that they have made or are authorized to use. The biggest of these channels, Manoj Paraha, was able to gain 20 million subscribers wow. in just over a year before YouTube also smashed it with the banhammer. However, even then, Super jo God, even though they knew that doing they were doing something wrong, like to build up a channel to that, that many million views, you know, like I'm sure they were like so proud, like 20 million subscribers just to wake up one day and you've got an email from from Google saying account terminated. Ah! Bruh. <laughs> My god, that would be devastating. Jojo Nursery Rhymes was banned with even more. Super Jojo caught copying Coco Melon. This Reddit post referenced a Cartoon Brew article reading, Super Jojo shamelessly free rides on Coco Melon's success by closely copying and exploiting every possible element of the Coco Melon channel, sometimes even frame by frame, which was displayed in the previously mentioned Reddit post, where wow. user Billy Disney showed just how badly the copying really was. As a result, in August 2021, Coco Melon launched a lawsuit against Super Jojo, claiming that the defendant has built its Super Jojo YouTube business by blatantly copying Coco Melon. One month after this, a new article was published reading YouTube terminates Coco Melon rival Super Jojo channel with 22 million subscribers, citing that they had received multiple third party claims of copyright infringement. Super Jojo's ban lasted for two months before the channel was then restored. However, this wasn't the end of the story. The channel's growth took a nosedive for following their return to YouTube, and in July 2023, a jury has decided that Baby Bus committed copyright infringement with its animated series Super Jojo, and as a result, they were ordered to pay Coco Melon $23.5 million. In that very same month, Super Jojo wiped their channel clean, deleting everything down to their profile picture, so while the channel is still technically active, Super it's Jojo gone. could easily be considered the largest YouTube channel that's permanently banned. Good grief. Man, some people really are, you know, just, they don't have a conscience, I think. Like, you know how most of us have that voice in our head that if we're thinking of, you know, something mean or something like that, we're like, no, don't do that. You can't do that. It's wrong. Blah, 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 blah. You know, some people clearly just don't have that at all. You know, it's just insane that you would fake that your girlfriend had died just to make content off that. You know, it's just insane that you would do that. 
you know, and just, I can't, I can't, you know, and the guy who, you know, was uh, making videos about Mr. Beast visiting his, his dying friend, and they were completely fake just to get views. It's just, mate, like, go see, go seek psychiatric evaluation. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.